In the first reading today, St. Peter tells us that the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will, after you have suffered a little while, himself perfect, confirm, and establish you. Now think of what he's saying here, that God has called us to eternal glory, but before we can get there, we have to suffer. And that suffering is going to perfect us, it's going to confirm us, it's going to establish us. Now we might look at that and say, yeah, 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 pious pablum, we've heard all this how many times? But listen again to what St. Peter says right before that, you know, a couple of lines before that anyway. He introduces himself and he said, I myself am a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of that glory which is to be revealed in the time to come. So in other words, St. Peter, he's pointing to the suffering of Christ, but he's telling us also that he himself is a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed in us. So this isn't pious pablum. This is somebody who was united with our Lord in his suffering and understanding now what that implies, St. Peter would be a participant, a partaker of that suffering. But that little line that's there, partaker also of the glory, which is to be revealed in time to come. So St. Peter saying he's already a partaker in this. I don't know exactly what it is that was happening within him, how God raised him up, what grace he gave, we don't know. But the fact that he's telling us this and then telling us, here's the pattern. You're going to have to suffer for a while and then God is going to give you eternal glory. So what's so important about the suffering? Why? Well, first of all, St. Peter says it's to perfect us. Even St. Paul says regarding Jesus in his letter to the Hebrews, was it, was it not you know, the way that, that, that the Messiah would be perfected was through suffering? So even Jesus, St. Paul says, was made perfect through his suffering. That doesn't make any sense. Jesus is already perfect. He is God. So what's St. Paul getting at? In this case, it's the demonstration of the perfection. This is the way. This is, this is how we can demonstrate that, that holiness and that perfection, which is ours. Now, in us, obviously, the suffering will perfect us because it strips, up, strips us of the attachments. It strips us of the selfishness. It strips, of, strips us of anything that is not virtue, ultimately anything that is not God. And so that's where we become perfected. If you're going to be perfect, only God is perfect. So that implies that your will becomes united with the will of God. That's the perfection. So God has to strip away everything so that our will becomes one with his. So that's, again, what the suffering can do. If we can accept it, if we can embrace it, if we can learn from it, over time we grow in humility and we're even able to rejoice in it as we're told over and over and over again in the New Testament to do. St. Paul says it will confirm us. To confirm means to strengthen. And this is going to be critically important for any of us. Even if we don't achieve that perfection in this life, we still need to be strengthened. Think about what we do. We pray in the Hail Mary, asking Our Lady to pray for us now and at the hour of our death. That final battle for our soul at the hour of death, Satan pouring out everything he can upon us. What if we don't have any strength? What if we're not accustomed to dealing with his temptations? What if we don't have the ability to fight him off because we don't, we don't know how, we haven't done it before? Think of anything. You can think of, of somebody who wants to run a race. You can think of a, a military platoon going into battle, whatever. If they haven't been prepared, if there hasn't been any training, what are they going to do? They don't know how to handle things. They don't have the strength. They don't have the ability. That's what God wants for us. Through the sufferings, we learn how to rely on God. We learn how to pray. We learn how to trust. 
And that, therefore, when the time comes and we're going to be suffering at the end of our life, we're going to be okay because we know how. We have been doing it. We've been strengthened. And the, the, the attacks of the devil aren't going to be that bad for us. But if all we have been doing is spiritually sitting around getting fat and lazy, we're not going to be able to fight because we don't have the strength, we don't have the stamina, we don't have the ability, we don't even have the know-how at that point to be able to do it. And so that's why the Lord would allow this, to strengthen us and to perfect us. And St. Paul says to establish us, or St. Peter says that, to establish us. To establish us as what? To establish us in Jesus Christ. To establish us as true members of the Lord as not, not just the fact that we're baptized into his mystical body, which we are, spiritually we are all united with him in that way, but now he wants us to be partakers in that divine nature, partakers in the suffering of Christ so that we can share in the glory of Christ. So it's to establish us as who we are. Certainly human persons made in the image and likeness of God but now sons and daughters of God himself, members of Jesus Christ. So we share in the suffering, we share in the passion. It is in that that we demonstrate or establish ourselves in Christ. We show ourselves to be true members of Christ. That's what the Lord is offering. And if we can do that now, then what awaits us is eternal glory. So when St. Peter says that he's the witness of the suffering and a partaker in the glory to be revealed, then that's what he's asking of us, to, take, to follow his pattern, to, to follow where he has led, which is to follow where Jesus has gone, to go up that path to Calvary through the passion to the glory. There is no other way to get to the glory other than through the passion. And it's not just for proving something, but it's to perfect, to confirm, and to establish us in Christ in this world so that we can share in the glory of Christ in the next.